Good morning, my name is Chris Fox, and today we're talking about heroes and why they're so critical to our society. For a long time as an author, I thought our role was somewhat frivolous and not that important, but when I started to understand the mythological purpose of heroes in our society, I realized, no, we are the stewards of the lore. We are the the keepers of the imagination. It's our job to present these mythological archetypes or archetypes to our, our tribe so that they can learn the same old lesson as a new generation. Every generation has to learn this lesson. I had to learn it. You'll have to learn it if you're young. It's an understanding of what we as people are and sort of what the best of us and the worst of us are heroes and villains. And the best way to do that is Joseph Campbell's The Monomyth. This is why he did his groundbreaking work in the subject, why it resonates so much with me, and why whenever I watch almost any movie or TV show, I can clock it using the story circle Dan Harmon created. This is why I have 50 novels in print. Almost all of them follow this template very closely, because I understand that heroes are important, and I'm taking a hero on a journey, and the reader's going to be that hero. So the reader is that immature hero at the beginning, but they're also the mature hero at the end. And so they themselves, as a reader and a person, have changed. And I, I think somebody who said it far more eloquently than I ever can is C.S. Lewis. And I'm going to go ahead and flash that quote up on the screen. His ideas about wonder and how important it is for kids, when I read this, just floored me because it makes so much sense. And you could say it simply as just let kids be kids. They need to grow up believing they can be astronauts, believing they can be the president. And that that's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean they're automatically corrupt. Uh, even if you're somewhat wrong and, and some corruption is existing there and you're not like rooting it all out, this endless inquisition it feels like our society has become is not helpful to anybody. We have deconstructed all of our heroes, one after another after another, all of the heroes that I grew up with, and I just don't see them being replaced. And I, I think that's doing a huge disservice to our children. And as a father with a three-and-a-half-year-old son, no, <laughs> it's my job to change that. It's my job to make entertainment that will be heroic, that will bring new heroes that can inspire new generations. And I'm just not seeing that happen in modern entertainment in nearly the same way that it used to. If you contrast when Iron Man came out and the rise of Marvel and you look at the drivel that's being shoveled today, there's nothing like that. And what's missing is the heart and soul of it. They understand the paint by numbers of what a superhero movie is supposed to be, but they took all the heroism out. And at the end of the day, that's what we're there for as a fan. We want to see somebody at their worst and at their lowest stand up and go face their problems and fix them. And removing that from cinema is why I think fans as a whole are disengaging. Heroes are important. They're vital. And we, as authors, get the choice to use them or don't. All of my novels use them, and I've gotten countless emails from people all over the globe. My favorites are the ones from kids who've been bullied like I was bullied as a kid, where they just seem to know what my childhood was like and reach out and ask, did you really struggle in junior high school and were, were people mean and picked on you? And I suspect it's because we all had kind of the power fantasy where we wanted power as a hero, but for the wrong reasons. We wanted to be able to punish the people that were hurting us and torment others. But when you go through the hero's journey, what you learn is while you may have started out wanting power for the wrong reasons, the act of becoming a hero will turn you into a better person and you'll use it wisely. So in other words, you're not going to go punish that, that bully at the end in the way that you wanted to in the beginning. You're not going to use your newfound powers or skills in that way. You'll probably end up defending the bully and helping them change as a hero. And, and you can see this in so many great stories. I don't even need to list them off because you probably have your own ideas of what those great stories are. But I got to ask you, if you look back over, let's say, the last seven or eight years, how many great new stories have come out? Have we had a Harry Potter? Have we had a Lord of the Rings? Have we had a, I'm trying to think of other other genres that have like put up heroes like that. And, and I'm just coming up short. I mean, I, I watched John Wick 4. I love the John Wick series, and, and I, I thought the fourth one was pretty decent. But I mean, we're at, a, we're at a point of ridiculousness now where they're all wearing suits, and they just pull their suits straight to deflect bullets. It's, it's not what it started out as. It, it's no longer some cool, innovative, like, wow, you know, society is changing because we got this great new movie. Now it's, well, I guess it's more the same, and maybe it's okay. 
that is going to hurt Hollywood in a bad way. And the writer's strike, I think, was a terrible idea. I get why they did it. But ultimately, they are going to be replaced by AI. And it's going to come for all creatives in the sense that if you can't generate good stories with good solid characters and good emotional resonance, you're in trouble. And what we're getting from AI and what we're getting from the writers who just aren't as proficient in their craft are stories that miss that heart and soul. If you want to make a living as an author and you want to survive doing this for decades, you can't make that mistake. We have to have amazing characters. We have to have heroes. And we can't do them dirty like is happening in, in modern cinema. You cannot kill off your main characters. You can't put your Luke Skywalker on an island and make him a loser hermit who won't help anyone. That's that's how you destroy franchises. And it's really fascinating and with Disney in particular watching now that all the truth has come out. For those of you not following the saga, I'll make a brief. The Disney Corporation corporation files taxes in the UK and they use secret names for each of their projects but they were found out and so we we learned the the real costs of all of the Star Wars movies and it turns out that either they've lost money on the Star Wars purchase so if you take the entire thing from day 1 episode 7 8 9 all of it every TV show they've lost money or they've managed to turn a very small profit and if the if the latter is true it's because of the massive like 400 billion dollar tax credit they got from the UK that would be the only reason it was profitable because they got a tax break for all their losses they mismanaged that property so terribly. They just ran it face first into the ground. And all you got to do is go to Google Trends and look and see what the interest in Star Wars is like compared to what it used to be. They've really done a number on it, and I see that across the board in other areas too. We have an opportunity here, I think, to write good enough content that our fan bases stay loyal to us. And I'm seeing more and more friends option their stuff for TV shows or movies or do them themselves with Kickstarters. It's very viable to start doing it yourself, and we're going to have more and more power. My goal in the next five or ten years is to take all my stuff digital, do animated series or do a live-action one, video games. Start taking our stories with heroes and, and taking them more mainstream because... People will always need new heroes. People will always need another Harry Potter story. It's it's never going to go away. This is something that we, I think, spiritually seek, even if we don't understand that we're doing it, because it's how we encapsulate wisdom and pass it down to the next generation. Anyway, I know this is a somewhat esoteric video and maybe a little bit preachy, but I've been very saddened by the state of entertainment in the last few years, and you can see a few videos on this channel that have called that out. I also feel somewhat vindicated in that I started saying in 2017 there's going to be a cost to pay if they don't honor their heroes. And people are like, nah, look, it pulled in a billion dollars. Well, yeah, but then the sequel pulled in less, and that sequel pulled in less, and now we're all the way down the road where they're putting out what I'm hearing are amazing series, but me as a lifelong Star Wars fan, I'm not even interested. Sorry, you've murdered the franchise. You killed all my heroes and, and dishonor them. And I'm not interested now. So it doesn't matter what you do. You've, you, I've lost hope in the franchise. You, you killed it. And you can't do that. You need to have strong heroes. And, and you have to honor those heroes. Like if you complete a hero's journey, you can't later tear it down. Because that, that undoes the spiritual work that, that it's doing in the subconscious of the reader. And that is vital, as I've said. Anyway, if you, if you want to talk more about this in the comments, I'd love to hear your opinions. Do you think the hero's journey is as important as I'm making it out to to be? Or can, can you be successful as an entertainer without it? I, I maintain that in most fields, especially science fiction and fantasy, you can't. But prove me wrong in the comments. I'd love to hear, hear the discussion. Anyway, I do need to get back to the writing. I've got a lot of projects in the offing. I'm working on some wargaming rules for the Magitech Chronicles and also writing two new projects, a couple of humorous fantasy books and an archaeological thriller. So you'll see more of that stuff manifest on this channel in the near future. All right, I'm going to get back to the writing. I'll see you guys next week.